sick after I took him out to a Father's Day dinner and uh, he unfortunately got food poisoning. So um, he, he, he wasn't able to make it this morning, so I'm here to uh, uh, pretty much recite his speech on his behalf. So uh, once again, apologies for his absence and uh, I hope that I do his speech justice. Uh, to the students of Polytechnic University of the Philippines in attendance this morning, to the organizers of the symposium, especially the Center of Peace and Poverty Alleviation Studies, and, and the Department of History, to the administrators, teaching staff, and other personnel and employees of the university, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. invited me here at PUP to speak at this forum. Although it was scheduled a month before its intended date, the invitation was supposed to be still on July 30, but we had to schedule the event sooner for reasons I'm going to explain in a short while. Pasensya na kayo. Alam ko kasi simula pa lamang ng inyong klase at kumbaga sa kotse, marahil hindi pa siguro umiinit ang makina ninyo. Upang sumabak sa ganitong kabigat, at kaseryosong talakayan. Pasensya na at yung Tagalog ko medyo okay lang. <laughs> sa July 30 po kasi ay balik session na ulit kami sa Senado at inaasahan namin ang magiging sobrang bigat ang trabaho dahil sa panukulan ng Bangsamoro Basic Law. May inahabol po kasi ang deadline. Di umano ang Malacanang kaya po nakakatiyak Ako na talagang magiging puspusan ang action at debate sa Senado tungkol dito pagdating ng July 27. Kaya minabuti kong pakiusap sa mga organizers ninyo na gawing mas maaga ang ating forum upang sa gayon, gayon matuloy ito at hindi masayang ang napakandang pagkakataon na makausap ko kayo ng mga mag-aaral ng PUP. Alam niyo sa mga nakalipas na buwan, napakarami ko ng nakausap ng mga, ng mga kababayan nating tungkol dito sa BBL. Umabot pa ako sa ilang mga bayan sa Mindanao. Nakausap ko ang mga taga roon, ang MILF, pati ang MNLF ang mga opisyal ng lokal na pamahalaan at mga ah ahensya ng gobyerno, mga indigenous peoples, mga sultan at mga datu, at mula sa iba't ibang sektor ng lipunan. Sabi ko, sa dami, sa dami ng aking mga nakausap, hindi ko pa na nakakapanayam ang mga kabataan at mga mga aral. Kapag ito ay hindi ko gagawin, Napakala napakalaking pagkukulang nito dahil ang kabat kabataan ang siyang kinakabukasan ng ating bayan at ang siyang pangunahing makikinabang sa anumang ginagawa ng, na namin ng mga ito. Sorry, nanilabius din ako. <laughs> That's why we are all here now. Thus, I beg your indulgence and patience in what I consider to be a very important dialogue with the young, yet important sector of our society assembled here this morning. And to get on with our discussion for today, you requested me to share with you my reflections on the Bangsamora Basic Law Bill. Post Mama Sapano incident. As a short backgrounder, first, this so-called Mama Sapano incident was the deadly encounter that happened in Barangay to Canalipao in Mama Sapano, province of Maguindanao on January 25 of this year, wherein about 400 special action force of the PNP attended to covertly go in MILF controlled territory to serve the warrants for the arrest of bomb makers and fugitive terrorists, Marwan and Usman. Unfortunately, however, they were engaged in a heavy firefight by members of the Moral Islamic Liberation Front. The Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters and other loosely organized armed groups, numbering about a thousand. 
When the smoke cleared, the clash resulted in the deaths of our fallen 44. About 20 plus casualties from the MILF and BIFF side, and about seven unconfirmed number of civilians. The tragic Mama Sapano encounter occurred four months after the BBL was filed in Congress. And while deliberations of the bill were already underway, and naturally, because of the public alarm and outrage that was triggered by the event, the BBL hearings were temporarily suspended to make way for official investigations of this encounter, including those separately conducted by the Senate and the House of Representatives. The investigations opened a Pandora's box of important issues which not only involved our national security, law enforcement and coordination between our police and the military, it also greatly impacted on the entire BBL itself. Almost in an instant, tremendous public uproar about the BBL erupted. This was primarily because of the IMLF, which is a group that was prominently involved in the Mama Sapano encounter, happened to be the sole exclusive negotiator of the peace agreement with the government of the Philippines. The peace agreement with the MILF ultimately yielded what is now the bill on the Bank Samora Basic Law. Of course, the issue of trust cropped up. Paano magpakita tiwalaan ang MILF sa kapayapaan sa Muslim Mindanao? Akala ko ba hangad ng mga pag-uusap ay kapayapaan? Kung ating tatandaan, gusto lang naman ng PNP sa na magaya ng arrest ng warrants laban sa mga tinaguri ang high-value targets. Tapos, lumabas, lumabas pa na ang mga wanted terrorists na ito ay nagtatago at kinukupkup sa mga lugar ng kontrolado ng MILF. Bukod pa rito, kinuha pa ng MILF ang mga armas at kagamitan ng ating mga PNP staff. Yung iba nakuha pag, pang mag-text ng mga hindi ka kaaya-ayang bagay sa mga na naulila ng ating Fallen 44. Tapos, nagkasundo na ibabalik ang mga gamit ng PNP staff na naagaw ng mga MILF. Ngunit na ang is isauli, sadyang cannibalize at kulang-kulang naman ang mga armas at mga PS nito. Paano na nga naman magpakitiwalaan ang MILF sa kapayapaan sa Bang Samoro kung ganito? As early as 2012, in the framework agreement on the Bang Samoro, which the MILF signed with the government, MILF agreed to start the normalization process so that communities in the Bang Samoro territories can already return to conditions where they achieve their desired quality of life. Moreover, the MILF agreed to undertake a graduated program for decommissioning of its forces so that they are put beyond use. Ibig sabihin nito, ititigil na nila ang pakikipaglaban sa gobyerno at sisimula na ang paglalansang ng kanilang mga armadong grupo. This was signed way back in 2012. However, it was only just this month we heard the process of decommissioning actually taking place. I was even invited to be present at this so-called decommissioning ceremonies of 75 high-powered weapons and 145 combatants. I begged off though. I wanted to tell them that I would only attend the decommissioning ceremonies of the very last firearm, the very last bullet, the very last combatant of the MILF. To me, that is the most crucial and most reliable signif signification of their most awaited paradigm shift towards the exclusive use of peaceful means and methods in the cause of autonomy. Related to this, there is also the issue about the effectiveness and efficiency of our agreed ceasefire mechanisms with the MILF. Because the Mama Sapano incident, the effectiveness of our ceasefire mechanisms was put to question. Kalo ba may maayos na proseso ng ceasefire o tigil putukan kapag may mangyayaring kaguluhan? Pero bakit napakatagal naman bago nagkaroon ng tigil putukan noong January 25? Kung tunay na maayos at epektibo ang mekanismo nito, siyak na mabilis sana at naging mas maaga ang pagtigil ng barilan. Mas marami sana ang naligtas sa ating mga staff mula sa kamatayan. There are so many issues brought to light by the Mama Sapano incident. It is indeed very saddening that this tragic event had to happen first. 
and the lives of 44 brave policemen lost. Before these relevant issues were brought to the attention of the government and of the people, at the very least, we are greatly comforted by the thought that our fallen 44 heroes have given their lives not only for the single valiant purpose of bringing fugitives to justice, but more important and trans transcendental for that reason, that of revealing imperfections, weaknesses, and causes for concern and airs improvement on the part of government and other important personalities. And finally, the numerous agreements and mechanisms in the entire peace process involving Muslim Mindanao. However, regardless of the impact of the Mama Sapana incident, we still have to see through this BBL in Congress until its proper and most beneficial conclusion and ultimately for ratification by the people. In this BBL, we are, uning, we are renewing our constitutional commitment to peace and development with our brothers and sisters in Muslim Mindanao. And in light of this commitment, we are likewise attempting to recalibrate the terms of the grant of autonomy to Muslim Mindanao, which is, as of the present time, is legally known and legally recognized as an autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. Of course, we are doing this all in the context of and within the framework of our constitution, constitutional democracy. The form of government that is ordained and authorized by our 1987 constitution is unitary, presidential, republican, and constitutional form of government. On the national level, we have the executive, legis legislative, and judicial branches. Then on the local level, we have what are called the territorial and political subdivisions of our country or our local government units, like your very own city of Manila. Under the Constitution, our local government units are allowed to enjoy local autonomy, which is in the nature of administrative autonomy or decentralization of administration. They have certain powers allowed under Constitution and further enfleshed under the local government code, and are under the general supervision of the President. But then, our constitution, which also recognizes what are known as autonomous regions, which are an aggregation of local government units, which share a common and distinctive historical cultural heritage, the only two autonomous regions authorized by the constitution are the Cordillera region and Muslim Mindanao. These autonomous regions are special in that under the constitution they have extensive powers which are not otherwise possessed by ordinary local government units. Based on an enabling law to be enacted by Congress, these extensive powers of the autonomous region would be exercised by the regional government, which would have its own special executive, legislative, and judicial branches. According to the Supreme Court, the autonomy they enjoy is political autonomy, and not merely administrative autonomy. However, notwithstanding the political autonomy, these autonomous regions are very much still part of and are never intended to be separate from the Philippine state. In fact, the Constitution mandates that they shall be within the framework of this Constitution and the national sovereignty as well as territorial integrity of the Republic of the Philippines. Moreover, like ordinary local government units, they are also subject to the general supervision of the President of the Republic. Now, as of this time, only the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao have been organized. The Cordillera region has not yet been officially organized as an autonomous region, despite two attempts by Congress in the past two decades. But I am aware that efforts are being made now in the Cordilleras to undertake its third attempt at autonomy, perhaps inspired and buoyed by the whole BBL saga. So again, what we have now is the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, or the arm, under Republic Act Number 9054. However, in September last year, Malacanang sent to Congress the draft of a bill entitled Bangsamora Basic Law, which, as its full title conveyed, conveyed sought to abolish the arm and repeal the existing law, which is RA 9054. In groping to understand the reason behind all this, we go back to what the President had said a few years ago, that the arm was a failed experiment. Yes, our President said that. Pero ang problema, ang malaking problema ay lumabas sa aming mga pagdinig sa Senado na marami pala sa provisyon ng BBL ang labag sa ating saligang batas. 
okay ba? <laughs> Kaya ang aking ginawa ay minabuti kong humingi ng isang pauna at pamanggang lecture o sermon mula sa aming dalubhasa sa Senado at sa Ligang Batas na si, si Senador Miriam, San, Miriam Santiago. Ang ginawa... Ang ginawa ni Senador Miriam ay inipitahan niya ng mga magaling at matitinik na mga utak sa Saligang Batas upang pag-aralan itong BBL. At kung ito na nga ba ay naayon sa ating Saligang Batas. Sa kas kasawiang palad, ipinagtibay ng report ni Senador Miriam ang aming mga nungunang hinalap. Labag talaga sa konstitusyon ng BBL. Ang gusto raw di umano ng BBL ay gawing isang part sovereign state o isang sub-state ang tinaguriya ang Pangsamoro. Allegedly, it has all the elements of a state under Montevideo Convention, namely, per permanent population, defined territory, and capacity to enter into relations with other states. Tapos magiging iba ang in in istruktura ng gobyerno sa loob nito, parliamentary. Eh ang gobyerno ng Pilipinas ay presidential, di ba? Paano naman mang ma mangyari yun? Kaya na nga, kumbaga sa sikat ng libro ngayon ni Sen. Miriam, Stupid is Forever. Bukat pa rito, napakaraming kapangyarihan ang binibigay sa Pangsamoro Gobo. Mas marami at mas malawag pa sa mga kapangyarihan na pinapayagan sa mga autonomous region sa ilalim ng ating saligang batas. Sa dami ng kapangyarihan ang ipinibigay sa Pangsamoro government para bang may sarili na itong buhay na hiwalay sa bansang Pilipinas. What do all these observations lead to? If Congress were to pass this exact version of the BBL, as drafted by the palace, then the result of law would clearly and grossly violate our constitution. Hence, all the painstaking work of Congress could just end up being another sumptuous target of a petition by a concerned and well-meaning Filipino taxpayer for certiorari and prohibition with the Supreme Court on the ground of unconstitutionality. In any event, and without preempting the official findings and recommendations of my committee, we are aware of the following remedies and options allowed by the Constitution and existing doctrines of the Supreme Court. Firstly, the Congress might have to modify and adjust the present version of the BBL in order to align and make it consistent with the Constitution. Sworn of the unconstitutional provisions, the BBL could then already proceed to be a legitimate subject of legislation by Congress. To repeat, Congress cannot pass a law that would go against the Constitution. This is based on the doctrine of constitutional supremacy. If the proponents of the BBL in Congress are really bent on passing the BBL in the exact shape and form as drafted by the palace, then there would be no other legal recourse but to initiate a coordinate move of amending or revising of the Constitution. This is in order to accommodate and make possible all the drastic changes in our existing government structures and institutions called for under the BBL. Thus, under Article 17 of the Constitution, said proposed constitutional changes shall be done by Congress either through direct action upon a vote of three-fourths of all of its members or through a constitutional convention. This particular view is shared by eminent legal minds, most notably by former Supreme Court Chief Justice Artemio Panganiban. These are the peaceful, unifying, and constitutional ways of doing it. In the name of peace, let these be done. No shortcuts, no railroading, no threats of violence, no threats of war. Let us do this right, as one nation united by our constitution and under one flag. Tandaan at isa puso natin ang ating panunumpa sa watawan. Ako ay Filipino, buong katapatang nanunumpa sa watawan ng Pilipinas at sa pansang kanyang sinasagisag. Namaydangal, katarungan at kalayaan. 
On my part, I assure our youth and our posterity that as elected representative of the Filipino people, entrusted with the life and the future of life and, our fu and the future of our nation, your humble public servant will continue the valiant struggles of our patriots by ensuring that the sovereignty and territorial integrity of our country are kept intact and respected by all, and our people united by a common aspiration for genuine and lasting peace, order, justice and development, not only in Mindanao, but in our entire country as well. Let me end on that note, my dear students. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope that you are able to pick up important lessons about our topic this morning. Because of its sheer importance to our life as a nation and to our lives as a Filipino people, especially to you, our youth. As the future of our great land, you shall be inheriting the country and the society that we, your pro pro progenitors and forebears, are now shaping and molding in your behalf. What we are doing now is history in the making. And by your active involvement and your insights in the national dialogue, you too can be part of the process in writing this particular chapter in our history. So I urge you to be involved, and I also humbly ask you for your support, your patience, and your understanding. Mabuhay ang ating mga magagaling at makabayang mag-aaral ng PUP. Mabuhay ang Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Maraming salamat po sa inyo.